my god, my brain went nuts after reading this issue. This title isn't clickbait. What's up everyone, James here, and we return to the finale of the second arc of Void Rivals. Make sure you hit that like button. If you are new here or need to catch up, the Void Rivals playlist is right here and right below the like button. With that out of the way, let's get into it. So this issue opens with Premier's Lilac reporting and admitting to Minister Doolin that he failed to end his son and Solila, that unity hasn't been averted and is still in play. He says, I fear Minister Doolin, the fate of everything we hold dear now rests in your hands. Doolin responds that his distress over the situation is warranted, but is pained and alarmed that someone of his stature has been brought so low over it. Zelilah gets pissed because he takes Doolin's response as him gloating and toying with him. However, Doolin tells him to calm himself and says, this isn't the first scare, nor is it the first time Agorians have had to clean up your mess. And I fear it won't be the last. Doolin out. After Doolin ends the call, Zelilah leaves his chamber. One of his troops approaches and reports to him that their scientists have begun analyzing the data pad they've received from one of the soldiers that returned from the wastelands. Remember, in the last video, Derek had Springer give one of the soldiers a data pad on everything about Energon. I think Derek is going to regret that decision when he sees it does nothing for the people and only serve the military. That's my theory. The soldier tells a lie like that so far the information they've taken from it could change everything for Zertonians. Despite what the soldier is reporting to Zalilak, he isn't taking it seriously until it's something of substance. So he orders the soldier to notify him when the findings are confirmed. Meanwhile, in the streets of Zertonia, Ultum approaches Proximus who's lying in this alley, thinking he is dead. Remember, Ultum was the kid who betrayed Darek, Zalila, and the Zertonian unifiers at the end of the last arc because the Zertonian army promised him they would find his mother. To no surprise, they didn't keep their promise. Because when Proximus tells him that he isn't dead and asks him what he's doing here, Ultim reveals how he betrayed the Unifiers and how after they got away, the Zertonian army made him a cadet, but they haven't kept their promise to find his mother. Proximus responds that he was a cadet once, and when Ultim says he thinks his mom is dead, Proximus agrees. As Ultim begins to cry, Proximus tells him to stop in case the soldiers hear him. Ultim apologizes and says he can be strong and asks Proximus if he can hide with him. Proximus answers, sure kid. I think Kirkman gave us this scene because if my theory is correct, that Proximus is Solila's brother, Polata, he sees Ultum as the scared cadet he once was. And we saw that in the flashback of him and Solila as cadets. From here, we're going to go to the asteroid Monicus, where Lord Gaikany and his forces are chasing the Skuxoid. He managed to steal whatever valuable item Bosch hired him to steal. So my theory I propose in my Hot Rod on the Hunt video of Lord Gaikany being behind the robot that's been following the Skuxoid is probably wrong. The Skuxoid takes out one of Lord Gaikany's vehicles, stopping him and his forces in their tracks and allowing him to escape successfully. Lord Gaikany yells in frustration and tells the Skuxoid that it will be his end if he ever steps foot on Monicus again. As the Skuxoid prepares to leave, he looks up at the stars, wondering what is he doing all this for? Since, as we saw in the Hot Rod on the Hunt video, he doesn't have his family anymore. In the wasteland, Solila prepares to go on her journey. Derek approaches and tells her he's thought about them parting ways and still doesn't like the idea, and asks where she's going. Solila answers, I have been charged with a sacred task of finding Zerta. You may deny it, but I know you heard her voice. And now, so have I. She called me from within the sacred ring. She explains that Zerta told her that the unity between their people is drawing near, that everything they've done together up until now was meant to happen, and he needs to go to Agoria and prepare his people. Later, as they're about to depart on their individual journeys, Solila wishes Derek luck with his people, but Derek responds he doesn't need it since he'll have a giant killer robot with a sword on his side. Solila reminds him to keep their promise of giving Candela's data pack to the Agorian unifiers. As she leaves, Darak, still not wanting her to face her journey alone, gives her his Handroid. What's funny is that Handroid is objecting to this, saying it is treason. Solila promises to return it, which Handroid is happy about. She also tells Darak that he reminds her of her brother. When Darak says thanks, Solila replies, 
that's not a good thing. I don't want you to end up as he did. Please take care of yourself. As the rivals embrace each other, both of their minds eyes touch. We then see a giant mechanical figure inside the black hole of the sacred ring. This figure awakens, showing its green eyes. As soon as Solila and Derek separate, Derek responds to Solila saying, I will, and you do the same. The giant mechanical figure returns to its slumber. I think it's safe to assume that this mechanical figure and the being known as Goliant that we've heard throughout this entire series is Unicron. Shout out to the subscriber, the movie god 4613. He theorized this in my video covering the end of the first arc of Void Rivals. This is insane. Man, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the Energon Universe playlist, Phase 1 Origins and Phase 2 War to get caught up on every series in the Energon Universe. Also, 80% of you haven't subscribed to the channel. Help me reach the goal of 50,000 subscribers. I would greatly appreciate it. Other than that, have an awesome day and always remember every day to go beyond.